Okay, good morning, hello, and welcome to a great year in earth science. My name is Michelle Reitler, and I've been working since basically 2001 in the public school system, and since 1993 in the uh, public sector in education. I'll be available both online during office hours and by email, as well as by phone most days. Please don't hesitate to ask questions at any time, whether you're in lecture or not. Now, without further ado, let's begin our first lecture on the disciplines of earth science. Earth science is considered an interdisciplinary science. It relies on a basic knowledge of the other sciences, such as chemistry, physics, astronomy, and even biology. To understand earth science, it helps to understand the origins and basic theories behind what earth's materials, which are elements, compounds, minerals, rocks, etc., are composed of and where they originally came from. The science of physics concentrates on the interactions between matter and energy. All that exists in totality is defined as the universe. The universe to a physicist is composed of either matter or energy. Matter is defined as material that has substance with a measurable property known as mass. Mass is, the proportional, is proportional to the size or volume of matter and is related to the property known as weight, which is the mass under the influence of gravity. Mass is a constant while weight is influenced by gravity. So for example, a 200 pound human would weigh over a thousand pounds on Jupiter because of Jupiter's larger mass and heavier gravity. There are four basic states of matter, solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. You know the first three, but I'm going to define plasma for you. It is an extremely hot ionized gas as found in stars. There also exists in the universe an enormous amount of apparently empty space containing no detectable matter or energy. However, physicists suspect that there is a type of matter called dark matter there. Um, they have no proof of it, but they suspect that it exists just because of the amount of space it takes up. Energy is defined in physics as the ca capacity of a physical system to do work. Energy, unlike matter, contains no mass and is measured usually by its effect on matter. Work in the physicist's definition means a measurable change in the system or a local environment that is under observation. So that's a lot of definitions. Um, and so remember I said physicists believe that the universe is composed of matter or energy, but there is a, a theory that combines the two. Physicists have long sought to define the mathematical relationships between different parts of the natural universe. Perhaps the most famous equation in physics is Albert Einstein's equation from his special theory of relativity, which has summarized its mathematical relationship between matter and energy equals mc squared, or energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. To understand Einstein's equation is in a qualitative rather than a quantitative sense, it means simply that a tiny amount of mass or matter can be converted into a tremendous amount of energy. The speed of light, which is c, is a stupendously large number. Squared means to multiply this huge number by itself, and the result c squared is such a large number that even when multiplied by a microscopic amount of mass, the resultant e, or energy, will be a huge number. This is the explanation for nuclear energy and explains what causes stars, including our sun, to shine. We will now borrow from the science of astronomy, the study of outer space. Astronomy is one of our oldest sciences, dating back to some 4,000 years of human history. Ironically, geology and earth science have only been around for about 200 years. Nowadays, many aspects of physics have been incorporated into astronomy as the interdisciplinary field known as astrophysics. From astronomy, we will now look at the current theory of the origin of our universe known as the Big Bang, not the television show. Many years ago, astronomer Edwin Hubble made a startling discovery that all objects in space were moving away or receding from the Earth, and that the more distant the objects, the more rapid the rate of recession. The explanation for his observations is consistent with an ancient cosmic explosion later termed the Big Bang, whereby fragments closest to the explosion were more energetic and thus moving faster than the fragments more distant from the explosion. To help you understand this concept, try this thought experiment. 
Imagine that you could safely film an explosion and that you could view this film in slow motion, played backwards. What would you see? You would see the exploded fragments slowly converging together towards a central intact object. Now apply this conclusion to Hubble's observations. Would you not also conclude that the universe had a point of origin in time before the explosion? The answer would be yes in this thought experiment. You may wonder how Hubble was able to tell how distant stars and other objects could be receding. To understand this, you need to become familiar with the principle of physics known as the Doppler effect. I'll use sound waves as an example and extrapolate this principle to light waves, which is what Hubble did. All of us should be familiar with this experience. You're standing on a street corner observing an ambulance racing by with its siren blaring. How does the character of the siren sound change from when the ambulance approaches versus when it is receding from you? The pitch of the siren shifts and becomes higher when the ambulance approaches, and then it shifts to a lower pitch when the ambulance recedes. Most forms of energy, such as sound and light, may be represented graphically as, as waves, which are mathematical forms that repeat their shape and pattern. So when you have an approaching object, it shows a shift towards the shorter wavelength of sound, and a receding object shows a shift towards the longer wavelengths of sound. Now, with Hubble's observations, he was observing light, and light waves are but a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum of energy that exists in the universe. Have you ever noticed that rainbows display the red band on the outer edge while the blue band's on the inner edge? That's because red has a longer wavelength than blue light. So if we substitute light waves in place of the sound waves, the above pattern should be re restated as an approaching object shows a shift toward shorter wavelengths of light, or blue shifted, while a receding object shows a shift toward longer wavelengths, or red shifted. Hubble's observations verified by other scientists have consistently shown a red shift of light is displayed by all objects observed in outer space. This redshift is most pronounced when viewing the most distant objects at the edge of the observable universe. So at some great distance from the Earth, we are not only looking backward through a great distance, but also backward through time. Stars are basically hot, luminous, cosmic furnaces that fuse hydrogen into helium. In the process, a tiny amount of mass is converted into energy, which maintains the high temperatures necessary for fusion to continue, which is over 2 million degrees Celsius. Stars are classified according to their size and the amount of light they give off, or luminosity. The Sun is characterized as a medium-sized yellow star, with an expected lifetime of around 10 billion years meaning that the time span before the sun runs out of hydrogen. Other stars, such as blue or white supergiants, are much larger, hotter, and brighter than the sun, but have a much shorter lifespan, a few hundred thousand years. Still other stars are smaller than our sun, burn more dimly, and have even longer lifespans. Stars cooler than the sun glow orange or red. The most unusual stars form from the explosion of very large hot stars, where all of the heavy elements are crushed into a 10-mile diameter sphere of neutrons called a neutron star. A teaspoon of neutron star material would weigh more than the entire Earth. Some neutron stars emit X-rays, acting like a lighthouse beacon. Astronomers call them pulsars. The Sun is thought to have formed from a cloud of cosmic dust and hydrogen gas about 5 billion years ago. For as yet unknown reasons, the cosmic dust and hydrogen gas began to gather towards a common center through a process called accretion. As the dust and gas compressed, it began to spin, creating heat, and when the center of this cloud reached 2 million degrees, nuclear fusion reactions began and the sun was born. The sun continued to accrete leftover matter, However, certain concentrations of the leftovers formed the planets, which established different orbits around the Sun. Other solar system leftovers include asteroids, which are flying mountains, meteorites, so-called shooting stars, and comets, which are cosmic snowballs, mostly concentrated in a vast asteroid belt between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. Comets are now thought to have contributed a significant amount of the Earth's water early in its history. Okay, that concludes part one of this lecture, and part two will be recorded in a separate lecture. Have a good day.